Unless one is looking at a polyhedron that is empty or a single point, there are infinitely many points in the polyhedron. But in many instances, at least in two and three dimensions, one can observe that there are points that are corners like these ones. Clearly, if the polyhedron is a half space, there is no such corner. It turns out that these corners are important structural elements of a polyhedron, as we'll see later. But in the meantime, we need a characterization that characterizes these corners. And the definition is as follows. So we're going to define the notion of an extreme point of a convex set. Note that the set does not have to be a polyhedron. Let C be a convex set in Rn. Let Z be a point in Rn. We say that Z is an extreme point of C if Z is an element of C, and there do not exist distinct x and y in C, and a lambda between 0 and 1, such that Z can be written as 1 minus lambda times x plus lambda times y. What this definition is saying is that if Z is an element of C, and if Z does not lie in the interior of a line segment of two other points in C, then Z is an extreme point. For example, if you look at this Z here, no matter how small a line segment that you draw that contains the point Z, at least one of the ends of the line segment is going to be outside the set. And this seems to be a reasonable definition for corners for polyhedra in n dimensions. But it would be a mistake to think that extreme points are always sharp corners. For example, if you look at the unit disk, every point on the boundary is an extreme point. It takes a bit of algebra to show this, but it can be done. If one looks at this definition, it doesn't seem to be very easy to work with. Fortunately, for polyhedra, there's an easy way to determine if a given point is an extreme point or not. And this is the result. Suppose that the polyhedron P is given by all points X satisfying AX greater than or equal to B. Let X star be a point in P. Now, if we look at all the inequalities from AX equal to B that are satisfied with equality at X star, take them to form this subsystem here. Then x star is an extreme point of P, if and only if the rank of this matrix A superscript equals is equal to N. Let's take a look at an example. Suppose that my polyhedron P is given by this. Is x star equal to 1, 0, 0 an extreme point of P? First, we need to make sure that x star is a point in P, and it's clear that it satisfies all these inequalities. To determine if it's an extreme point, we need to come up with this subsystem. So the first three inequalities are satisfied with equality by x star. These are the inequalities active at x star. But this one is not because the left hand side is going to be minus 1, whereas the right hand side is minus 2. So in this case, we want to compute the rank of this. Now if we take minus 1 times the second row added to the third row, we get the row equivalent matrix. 1, 2, 3, 0, 1, 0, and 0, 0, 1. And clearly this matrix has rank 3. So the rank of A superscript equals is 3. And that implies that X star is an extreme point of P. Now one consequence of this proposition is that we can show there are only finitely many extreme points in a polyhedron. Let's look at a sketch of the proof of this. Say P is a polyhedron given as before. If X star is an extreme point of P, then the subsystem of inequalities active at X star will have coefficient matrix of X having rank N. Notice that X star satisfies this system of linear equations. But since the rank of this matrix is N, that means X star is the only solution to the system A superscript equals X equals B superscript equals. Since there are only finitely many subsystems of A x greater than or equal to B that you can choose from, therefore the number of extreme points cannot be more than the number of these kind of subsystems. And so the number of extreme points is finite. 